G'day mates. Have you ever wondered what effect COVID has on sleep apnea and CPAP therapy? I certainly have. Now Warren, who's a member on our Facebook group, has just been diagnosed with COVID and he's been kind enough to send me an invitation to review his CPAP therapy on Sleep HQ and I thought I'd share with you that information. Now currently I'm on the trend view and this page is really useful because instead of looking at your data every single day, we can go over to the trend view, extend out those time frames, and have a look at your therapy trends over larger periods of time. And this is really helpful. So currently I've got it set to the last 30 days, but if you wanted, you could change it and look at your therapy over a whole year. There we go, there's a the therapy over the whole year, or you can do a custom, or you could do seven days, whatever you like, okay? But we're gonna look at the last 30 days. Now this top chart up here is the AHI trend. Warren's apnea hypopnea index per hour over the last 30 days. Now back here in April, you can see April 11th, he had an AHI of 0.56, under one, doing great. In fact, throughout April, he's, he's killing it. So he rarely goes above two. Now coming into the start of May, you can see here, even without a rat test, I can see straight away where Warren got COVID and it was on the 6th of May right here. All right, because you can see after the 6th of May, boom, the AHI starts to trend up and it trends up really quickly. But get this, if we scroll down here and have a look at Warren's pressure, now he's on a fixed pressure machine, a CPAP machine. On the 5th of May, he was at eight centimeters. So that's where he set his pressure at, eight centimeters. Now Warren, he's obviously been watching my channel for a long time now. He's got COVID and he's thought to himself, uh oh, I think I'm gonna need some more pressure because I've got COVID. So he's increased his pressure to 10, a 20% increase. He's done this himself. All right, so even with that 20% increase in pressure, which should cause his apnea to come down, even with that 20% increase, his apnea levels have gone up quite a bit, haven't they? Now let's go over to the day view and check this out because it's pretty fascinating. So this is the day view and we're looking at Sunday, May 8th. So he's had COVID for a couple of days now. And on this particular day, he had an apnea hypopnea index of 4.05, which was up 1.43 on the previous day. Now, come down here, because this is really interesting. So this is a little snapshot of Warren's breathing. And you can see all these flags, large leak, large leak, large leak, large leak, these LLs, that's what that stands for, large leak. Um, and his breathing's all over the place. I mean, have a look at it. It's up, it's down, it's everywhere. So the reason is, Look at his leak rates. See how his leak rates are up high here and then they drop off and then they come right back up and then they drop off and then they come right back up again. What's happening here is mouth leak. So Warren's having a hard time breathing. He's using a pillow mask. Yep. So he's having a hard time breathing and because of that, he's, he's breathing out through his mouth. Now, so just take a mental snapshot of this picture of the large you know, this going up and down and how his breathing looks. Take a bit of a mental snapshot there because we'll go to a day where he doesn't have COVID and have a look at the difference. All right, Thursday, May 5th, just before he gets COVID, one day before it. Now come down here and have a look at this. Look at his breathing here. How? Have a look at his breathing here. I'll go back. Have a look at his breathing here. Terrible. Here, it's perfect. And have a look at the leak rates. There's hardly any leak rates at all. All right, do you remember before? Look at this yellow line, up and down, up and down. This is all, all mouth leak because he's really struggling to breathe. So he's breathing out through his mouth. Warren asked the question if I thought he'd done the right thing by increasing his pressure levels 20% when he caught COVID. And to be honest, Warren, I just don't know, mate. I can't provide advice on that definitely should speak with your sleep and respiratory physician when it comes to CPAP therapy and COVID. Um, on one hand, look, I can see there that your apnea hypopnea index was certainly trending up. So that would suggest you need more pressure. But at the same time, 
your lungs are going to be under a fair bit of pressure as it is with the virus. So they're going to be battling that virus and they're probably already weakened somewhat. So adding more pressure, yes, it will certainly force more air into your lungs. But at the same time, then your lungs have to expire against that pressure as well. So they've got to work harder. So I just don't know, mate, at the end of the day, but it certainly was fascinating to see the effects of COVID on your sleep apnea and therapy. Um, another possibility here is that when you increase your pressure from eight to 10, that overwhelmed your breathing and caused all these leak rates. So potentially it wasn't the virus that caused all these leak rates and for your breathing to turn crap. Potentially it was you increasing your pressure, which caused a lot of mouth leak and that's caused your flow trace to look like rubbish. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it with your mates and subscribe to the channel for more helpful content. And a big thanks to Warren was for sharing his data with us today. And to say thanks, Warren, I'm sending you a REM sleep O2 ring. So you'll be able to monitor your blood oxygen levels and your heart rate. And very soon, you'll be able to sync all that data in with your CPAP therapy on Sleep HQ. Until next time, guys, take care, sleep well, and I'll see you soon. Bye.